Hi, this is Arna. Welcome to the channel. Today we'll talk about what has happened in the past week in Ethereum ecosystem by going to the week in Ethereum news site. So we'll first cover what has happened in the protocol level stuff. Then we'll cover interesting things for developers and products and services that developers should check out. Then we'll go through releases of various projects. Next up, we'll discuss what has happened in the ecosystem in general and new products and services that are coming up. After that, we'll go through the EIPs that have that various people have proposed and the governance and the ERC system. Then we'll go through project updates of various projects and interesting features that they have come out with. Next up, we'll have a look at podcasts, interviews and talks of various people and interesting things that are happening in the space. After that, we'll go through tokens and we'll see what has happened in the token token space. And finally, we'll go through the space in general and talk about some big, big things that have happened like uh, Coinbase acquiring Earn.com and we'll go through dates of note of various conferences and events that are taking place in the near future. So yeah, let's talk about week in Ethereum today. So in the protocol stuff, what you'll find is that there's a lot of things happening in the sharding space um, sharding is a concept which is uh, being developed by ethereum um, and the goal is to actually solve the scalability problem so uh, vitalik wrote a post and um, almost all of the posts are actually related to sharding um, i'll just open them one by one so vitalik wrote about a general theory of what quadratically sharded validation is so it's a very technical post um, I'll not go through this one in this video because it will make the video quite long, but you should definitely check that out. It looks super interesting. Then we have application layer account abstraction, which is another under the sharding sub bracket. And it talks about what is happening and uh, it, it suggests a way to bootstrap accounts into account abstraction schemes at the application level. Then we have a recap of where we are at on account abstraction again by Vitalik Buterin and it, it is again in the sharding subcategory and uh, to give a gist it is basically in principle the account abstraction models that we have all considered so far work in a very similar way and it talks about the main challenge is the trade-off between flexibility of account forwarding policy and safety of transaction processing and transmission. So again, this is uh, this looks super interesting and it should be worth checking out. Then we have this interesting piece which talks about the Taurus shaped sharding network and it suggests that instead of using one network per shard, use a single network network but limit propagation of messages between nodes interested in different shards. So what that means is um, currently when we think about sharding, we have say um, network 1, network 2, network 3 and uh, we have one shard per network so network 1 has one shard network 2 has say shard 2, network 3 has shard 3 but this this guy is suggesting that we should have one network and uh, but these should have different shards but we should limit the propagation of messages between nodes interested in different shards so say you have node 1 and 2 in shard 1 you have node 3 and 4 in shard 2 we should limit the propagation of messages between nodes in say uh, between node 1 and 2 and nodes 3 and 4 which are basically nodes of shard 1 and shard 2 respectively so again this is this seems like a super interesting post again i'll not go through this one in full depth but i might make a full video on it but it, it looks super interesting to check it out then we have a uh, pre semantic second bi-weekly sharding update so everything is um, sh focused on sharding in the protocol level this week and there is a lot of work going in the sharding space um, again th this is uh, something which talks about sharding and it is I think quite technical so yeah then going on to stuff for developers we have solidity version 0.4.22 which is our dynamic returns error messages for revert and require and safer constructors event encoding utils etc 
so it's a new version of solidity that has come out yeah that is that is super cool then we have a new etherscan feature which is basically a contract event clock filter and we have a tutorial to create a shark of the pool dab with react and this looked very interesting to me and that this stood out is um, web3.swift version 0.1 if you like making native ios apps so one idea you'll get surely is something making for native android apps as well so um, this one is like uh, shark of the pool part one learn solidity so this is one of our tutorial by maybe creating a game or something like that yeah this is this looks interesting then uh, going through the web 3.swift part which which i found interesting is that web 3.swift is a swift library for signing transactions and interacting with smart contracts in the ethereum network if you allow it allows you to connect to a get or parity ethereum node to send transactions and read values from smart contracts without the need of writing your own implementation of the protocols web 3.swift supports ios mac os tv os and watch os with cocoa pods and carthage and mac os with and linux with swift package manager and uh, it goes through some examples and why why should one use it so yeah i think this is definitely worth checking out then we have um, typescript source tips uh, webpack dap template and uh, we have um, this this is we have this way of saving your users from paying gas for transactions um, and this one is also super interesting which is software licenses as non-fungible tokens so this is how to save your ethereum dap users from paying gas for transactions and basically i think their model is like to move the uh, paying of transactions to uh, the to the creator dap creator instead of the users um, so basically what if there was way for users to create to execute transactions securely and let someone else record the transaction on the blockchain and pay for it so th this this is what it is all about and again it is super interesting then uh, this i really like quite a lot which is software licenses as non-fungible tokens and it, it seems to solve a real world problem as well then we have a um, code example to verify message strings in solidity and we have andrew millers which is a famous who is a famous researcher he has a uh, proposed a minimalistic duplex payment channel and we of course have the consensus academy registrations open for the 2018 developer program on which you can register by paying around uh, i think thousand dollars and learn from the consensus experts um so this is like the minimalistic duplex micropayment channel for ethereum uh, by andrew miller he seems to have written uh, some smart contracts for creating i think payment channels uh, micropayment channel then uh, going to the academy the, the registration is open all interesting developers should check it should definitely check it out and uh, the course price is thousand dollars and registration is first come first birth served and it opens on april 16 but closes on june 4th and we have zeppelin um, upgradability using unstructured storage um, again this this looks interesting flint a new static statically type language aimed at code security is also under development now going to the releases we have um, uh, the parity release uh, version 1.10.1 which is warp to a specific minimum block number okay we have get version 1.8.4 which is like the go uh, go go try at ethereum clients which is and it proposes 40 percent faster blocks um, then we have akasha version 0.7 which is uh, which is an application by um, someone from the ethereum co-founders and we have status version 0.9.17 then in the ecosystem uh, alex van de sande looks at what happens to dApps in the event of a fork it is i checked this article and it really looked super interesting then we have ether chain has some coin votes going on about asics and hardcap but the most votes are on eip 
999 to unfreeze the parity multisig fund. Again, these are interesting things to look at. Then we have um, managing identity with a UI for ERC-725. And we have my crypto beta ready for public use plus security securely signed transactions offline with my, my crypto beta and parity sign up. Again, uh, my crypto beta is a spun off from uh, my ether wallets co-founder and uh, they have they have something for public use right now and uh, you can securely sign transactions offline this is a really cool feature which i had checked out some time back then uh, there are some ways it, it has a link as well how to renew or release your ens name and if a year is up you can release and get your deposit back to keep your name you don't have to do um, anything ens is ethereum name service then in the EIP ERC governance, again, there has a lot been a lot of activity um, in various EIPs. And uh, I think this this in, would involve a lot of time and a lot of discussion, but uh, we can look at some popular EIPs. So EIP 960, uh, which is hard cap of Ether supply, in which we have Vlad responding and Vitalik also responding and uh, Vlad again gave a counter respond to uh, Vitalik's response. So this is again super cool. Then we have a project updates. We have Colony uh, Q2 update, Golem's next step, post minute release. Uh, that is what are the steps they are going to take after they had launched the minute. And we have Funfair, which is a casino token um, announces for first partnership with an outside game developer um, fun fair was developing something for solving this scalability solution as well um, then we have melon ports phase 3 governance price feeds etc we have rex mlx mls is changing its name to embrex and april raiden raiden dev update has also come up then um, we have loom the loom network the famous network with the crypto zombies game is now planning to implement plasma for its tap chains and co found out its 2018 roadmap to become a platform yeah um, and we have interesting podcast i think this one is uh, super interesting which is john Choi talks ethereum grants and ecosystem on uh, zero knowledge and we have nick johnson on the fireside crypto podcast nick johnson again we had found him somewhere on the top um nick johnson had written yeah okay nick johnson was someone who had written about who did research of the eip and erc governance issues then in the tokens we we obviously had the safe droid ico uh, which was sort of like a trick that the team pulled by by running by saying that they are running away with the funds um but then they showed up and say that, hey, it's super easy to run with ICO funds and we as a community need to do a lot. Um, we have Addison Horowitz and Unisquare Ventures lead group to ask SEC for a safe harbor exemption. And uh, now that the talk tax seasons is over, everything thing, everyone thinks it's time to get long. His Pantera is rational uh, behind getting long. So this should be really, I think one should really check it what Pantera has to uh, speak of it. And uh, if, if we see what, what we were talking about. So this one is the discussion about the Mac cap total ether supply at 120 million, which was obviously posted by Vitalik Buterin on um, 1st April as sort of like an April Fools. So this is the podcast that I was telling you about, which is like the ecosystem development with John Choi of Ethereum Foundation. So Pantera had written this, human nature is proof cyclical. Go against the urge, Pantera blockchain leader. Before I address the markets, let's take one minute for a hugely positive thought. While I was watching an ad during the final four, 
narrative was all about the many cool things that this unnamed company or pro product could do. I was like, yeah, who cares? Blockchains can do all that. And then the credits sold out. It was an IBM ad for blockchain. That's a huge milestone. Legit company spending serious money to credentialize blockchain. Can't put the genie back in the bottle. Having just featured Sock Puppet blowing his entire funding round on a Super Bowl ad last month. This seems like a more sober company investing in the reality of a blockchain enabled future. So again, they talk about their rationale for the things that are going to happen in the near future. And this is definitely worth checking out. Then in, in the general space, again, we have uh, Ken Barton argues that we should avoid crypto tribalism. And the big news was obviously that Coinbase bought Earn.com and it had made Balaji Srinivasan, who is the CEO of uh, Earn.com as the CTO. And they also bought Cypher to work on Toshi. Cypher is a mobile browser that enables or uh, dApps to communicate with the Ethereum blockchain and smart contracts. And uh, MID Tech Review looks at Jordan Ref Refugee Camp using Parity. And we again had this uh, big news from Parity, which is Energy Web Foundation is using Parity for private permission on web assembly. And in the update, in the dates of Node, we have Oslo Blockchain uh, Day in April 24. We have Virtue Poker Sale in April 25. And uh, the big, big event is around May 3 to 5, which is EdCon in Toronto. Then we have Ethereal again, which is uh, close to consensus of Coindesk um, in this almost the same date. But again, Ethereal in May on May 11, 12 is again going to be a super fun event and you could you can use the discount code ethereal friends fam then we have token summit in nyc we have melon port hackathon um, and some interesting things like blockchain for social impact conference in washington dc so a lot of events in washington dc and nyc yeah so just let's check out what these guys are doing um, this is again the parity announcement and here we have the MIT tech review of the Jordan case and uh, one thing which I missed out is like uh, is about the ICO thing is that Cambridge Analytica the company behind the Trump's campaign and which is in the news for quite a lot of negative reasons uh, these days is that they were planning to do an ICO yeah and that is super interesting actually yeah so this is all regarding what had happened in the past week in ethereum if you have any feedback for this video please lick please write that down in the comments below i tried this video for the first time and i i think there is going to be a lot to improve so yeah okay bye bye